Hey everyone and welcome my name, my name is Matchpoint and today I'm going to be giving you an ability mistake for every single attack here in Rainbow Six Siege. Whether you are going to be looking for some go-to advice for certain operators in Siege or pick up something for your new main in Rainbow Six Siege, I'll be covering it all. Again, we'll be doing this in alphabetical order, so we'll be starting all the way with Ace and moving down to Zafia. I hope you all enjoy these tips and mistakes that I'm going to be showing you and if you do find these useful, be sure to drop a like on the video. And let's dive on into the first one, starting off with Ace. Now a big mistake I see players making when they're going to be playing Ace is when they open a reinforced wall for example, a defender can very easily quick peek over the edge of it when it does open, and many players get very very comfortable here, instead they don't watch out and they just watch for the longer angles, whereas a defender could be close by waiting for it to go off and peek up, as remember that Aquaselma Breacher is only going to do 5 damage once it does detonate. Now next up moving over to Amaru. Many players do get very comfortable as well with Amaru, for example they think they can very easily rush in with their ability, catch any defender off guard, but the fact is it might not always be clear, which is why I would recommend having your drone in the desired room that you're going to be entering beforehand to then quickly flick on it whilst your ability does actually have to charge up first, and then you can clear it whilst the ability is charging and then make your way on in. Remember, just because you are Amaru you can grapple from building to building doesn't make you Spider-Man. Next up, a massive mistake I see players making with Ash is they actually use her ability on useless stuff. This is when you are going to be using her ability on barricades to get you a little bit quicker into the building, whereas you should be using it on utility, that is going to be difficult for you to take out, and main soft walls that are going to open up new angles for you and your team. I know the Ash mains like to open it with that barricade to get themselves in a little bit quicker, but trust me, you'll be helping out your team a lot more. Now a mistake I see newer players to Blitz making is that they don't realise that their shoulders can get shot. You can very easily be, be killed as your shoulders aren't going to actually be covered when you are going to be holding that shield down. From the right and left shoulder you can very easily get a shot onto it and multiple shots will end up killing you. Either be aggressive or a little bit more cautious when you are going to be playing him in certain scenarios. Now for Buck, an operator who is going to be fantastic for that vertical play. A massive mistake I see players making with him when they are going to be using him for that vertical play is opening up way too many areas from above. To apply pressure when using vertical play with Buck, you want to be doing it strategically, not opening up every single soft floor that you get your eyes onto. Simply opening up strategical areas that you have intel on, where an anchor might be holding, that type of stuff is what you want to be aiming for. Now a massive mistake for Blackbeard is going to be, why are you actually playing Blackbeard? Do you want the community to suffer? On the other hand, if that is your pure intention behind playing Blackbeard, I would recommend you to crouch when using him. If you are going to be crouching, it is a little more effective when using your shield and it's going to cover you a lot more, especially when you compare this with a standing position. Now a mistake for Capital and definitely something to be aware of is that his smoke bolts are going to last a shorter amount of time compared to a regular smoke grenade or attack on an operator like Gridlock for example. Now Capital's smoke bolts are going to last for 10 seconds whereas a regular attacker's smoke grenades will last for 13 seconds. Now a mistake that I see players making with Dokubi is when they are going to be a little bit too handy with that ability. They use it in situations where it isn't going to be useful. Remember, you've only got two. I would recommend using it when you are going to be trying to clear out a Roma or push into a new position, for example, to try and gain some intel, flush them out, or simply distract them. Remember to keep that in mind. Now, a mistake for Finker is not coordinating with your team when you're going to be activating your ability or activating your Finker boost. If you don't give your team a little bit of a heads up when you are going to be activating your ability, it's going to throw them off. There are a lot of buffs and negatives that are going to happen when you activate this ability, so ideally making a call out, say their recall control, is going to be a little bit different as Finker's ability is going to half it, as well as many other effects that are going to take place, so make sure to give them a heads up and communicate. Now a mistake for Fuse is going to be fusing the hostage. Now that's not a mistake, we all know that's Fuse's real job. However, what you do need to be doing, and a mistake that players do make, is not taking advantage of the chaos and disruption that it is going to cause. It's going to force players to rotate out of their position, move away, you need to be taking advantage of this and looking out for those players. Next up for Glaz, players often don't stand stationary when they are trying to take use of his ability and the smoke grenades. He can obviously see through the smoke grenades, but the yellow target is going to become brighter once you stand stationary with Glaz, as it's going to recharge with the little yellow indicators on your actual reticle. Stay still when you are going to be using this. Now moving over to Gridlock, often players know to cover the roam with her on different stairwells and make use of her ability, but they don't know to actually cover and disguise the plant with it. When the diffuser is going to be planting, if you throw down your tracks, 
we are very easily able to disguise the plant with the sound being masked by those tracks. Often players with Havana will try to perfectly position those pellets. When Havana's pellets do explode, they are going to create a nice destruction and they kind of form together and explode. Therefore, you don't need to perfectly position them, wasting your time. Simply get them down and it will work and it will create a rotation that you can walk through. A massive mistake that I see players making and not taking advantage of when using Iona and Iona's ability is that they aren't going to be actually using the hologram to actually pick up a refrag on the enemy. If you combine it with another player, what you can do when using the hologram is when the defender shoots it out, you can get the other player to come in behind as the intel has been revealed and pick up a refrag. Now for IQ, a huge misunderstanding and misconception for her ability is that when you are going to be using it, often players will break down those barricades, those doorways, those windows to then shoot out the gadgets. In fact, keep those barricades up. You can still shoot through them. It's actually going to cloak you, disguise you, and it's going to make you of a, a less of a target when you are going to be using your ability because you can take it out behind cover shooting through the barricade. Now, a mistake that players are going to make with Jackal is they don't realize that Mute can actually counter his ability. Mute will counter it when it's activated and you won't be able to use it in the distance or the actual radius of the Mute. Or the Mute Jammer, should I say. Now, moving over to Kali, a mistake that they are going to be making is not realizing the actual destruction radius with her ability. It doesn't destruct the whole reinforcement. If you put it on trying to take out Cade Electro Claw, if you position your ability with Kali, her lance, at the very bottom of the reinforcement, it's not going to have the radius to take out the Cade if it was positioned at the top. Remember that when you are going to be using it. Now, one I see so many players making with the Operator Lion, they are going to be using his ability at the very start of the round. It is completely pointless to do this. And I wouldn't recommend you doing it like this. What you are going to be doing at the start of the round when you activate your ability is simply gaining intel on where they are setting up in the prep phase. It is a few seconds after that prep phase, so it is not going to be valuable to your team. Make good use of it when pushing in, getting closer to that objective. Now on to Maverick. A big mistake is players will find themselves getting killed when trying to trick the reinforcement. Now by tricking the reinforcement, what I mean is using your bellow torch to actually avoid the bandit and go across the whole reinforcement opening it. Now, it might be a little bit daunting to do, but one thing to help yourself out and not make this mistake like other players have is don't open it from the bottom first. If you end up opening it from the bottom, when you try to then open the top layer or the top line, your feet are going to be exposed and it's going to be very easy for the defenders to pick you off. Now, with Montaigne, many players don't take advantage of the shield feature that Montaigne does have when you are going to be planting that diffuser. If you plant the diffuser as Montaigne, your shield is going to be on your back, therefore covering most of your body which is going to allow you to get that plant down safely and securely. Use this to your advantage and start using it in more situations when you need to get the plant down as that shield operator. Now, a mistake for Nomad is players often place their air jabs in the open. These air jabs are going to be very easy to see for defenders or anyone for that matter who is going to be trying to avoid it. Therefore, tuck your air jabs in, make them a little bit more discreet, make it harder for the defenders to actually hear and also take them out. Therefore, it is going to trigger them and allow you to pick up a kill. Now, for Nock, when you activate her ability, it is only going to work if you are going to be walking. When you're running and if you make the mistake of running with your ability on, you aren't going to be cloaked anymore. The cameras and any intel device will be able to see you. A more well-known one, but if you are going to be playing Nock for the first time, you need to really keep this in mind. Next up is going to be Sledge, and often players don't take advantage of Sledge's ability. A mistake that they make is they aren't going to be using him for vertical play. Instead, they see him as another entry fragger that can be used to open soft walls, make your way through sight, and get in and get those kills. Now, by all means, this is a playstyle you can run if you execute it correctly. However, he is very useful for vertical play, and at the end of the day, you might as well choose another operator with this ability, for example, Sophia, if you want to be running that playstyle. Now, Thatcher is going to be an operator who's getting a little bit of a change with Operation Shadow Legacy. Now, some people might see this as a nerf. However, I do believe it is going to be a buff to him when especially trying to counter bandit tricking. If you disable it, it's going to get in the way of bandit. He's going to have to actually pick up the charge, place it back down, causing more time for the actual animation to take place. Don't be quick to judge this change. Give it a little bit of a test yourself and see how it is going to be feeling. Now, next up, a mistake for thermite. Often players don't take advantage of a trick called thermite tricking. Now, this technique is going to allow you to bait out the bandit by making a confusion with sound. If you need a little bit more detail on this, I did cover it in the latest bandit tricking guide. Now, next up is going to be Twitch, where players sometimes might be trying to counter a maestro. They simply zap the maestro camera, but this isn't going to fully take it out. It's only going to disable it. Instead, what you have to do is disable it, 
then move in with your weapon and take it out fully by shooting at the center of it. Now next up is going to be Ying and some people might see Ying as an operator who use her ability to flash the enemies and pick up a few free kills. However, the reality of it is it isn't going to work like that. Instead, often players either avoid the flash or they rotate away, which is great because instead what I want you to be doing is using her ability to gain a little bit more map control, flush out defenders and gain their position. That is how you should be using her and that is how you should see her as an operator. Now we move on to Zafia and players often like to pick up a kill using her concussion mines, which is actually the big mistake here because the reality is you won't be picking up a kill here. This is very easy to avoid or simply outlast it. Instead, use it to burn those Jaeger ADSs. Then you can switch over to your impact mine, which is going to allow you to take out more valuable utility to the defense. Now that right there is one ability mistake for every single attacker in Rainbow Six Siege. If any of this advice did help you out or you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like on it and subscribe for more tips and tricks videos like this one. Also, be sure to let me know down below in the comments which attacker is going to be your favorite in Rainbow Six Siege. I'll be interested to take a look at what the popular ones are. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.